What's good, Cubers? It's your boy, Matt, and now that War of the Spark has been out for a little bit and I've had a chance to really play with some of the cards in my cube, I thought for this week's Card of the Week we'd look at one of the premier planeswalkers from the set, Gideon Blackblade. Is this new walker good enough for cube? Let's take a peek and find out. So Gideon says, one double white, get a legendary planeswalker Gideon with foil loyalty. Gideon has a static ability that says, as long as it's your turn, Gideon Blackblade is a 4-4 human soldier creature indestructible. That's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon Blackblade during your turn. You can plus one him and up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible till the end of turn, and you can minus six him to exile a non-land permanent. So there are several pros to Gideon out the gate. Number one, Gideon cards have almost always ticked up to turn Gideon into a creature, but this Gideon is always turned on, which means you can use his abilities for other stuff other than just turning him into a creature. Furthermore, he is this really aggressive three drop, basically white creature, courtesy of his static ability. And he can hand out awesome keywords to the other creatures on your side of the board. Make them vigilant, like make them lifelink. I actually think vigilant is a super important one because it allows Gideon to have protection when you swing in on your turn, that other creature will still be up to protect Gideon on your opponent's turn. And then you can minus him to exile a permanent, which feels really good. But the con to Gideon is that he doesn't actually protect himself. You can't minus six the turn you play him, you have to actually tick him up a couple of times. So as a result, he's bad on an empty board. If you play Gideon, your opponent can just swing in and kill him, which I guess is true with any Planeswalker, but with no self-protection ability and no ability to make tokens, Gideon's actually really vulnerable. He also doesn't have an ultimate, which again, we don't play Planeswalkers for ultimate, but it is always nice to live the dream occasionally. And lastly, he's this creature Gideon, but he can't block. You can tick him up to do these cool abilities, but he can't protect your life points on your turn because he turns back into just a regular walker. So, how does Gideon stack up against other planeswalkers and, quite frankly, other Gideons? Because there's a lot of them. Let's look at a few. So there are three other Gideons that see play in cube. Gideon Jura, who can make your opponent's creatures attack himself with a plus two, who can destroy a tapped creature with a minus two, and who turns into a 6-6 human soldier that's still a planeswalker that can't take damage, in a similar vein to Gideon Blackblade. Then there's Gideon Ally of Zendikar, four mana, he becomes a 5-5, basically indestructible creature on the plus, he makes 2-2 two, two white knight ally creature tokens onto the battlefield with a 0, which is really solid. And then his minus 4, which you can do immediately, his ultimate, is that creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. I actually think Gideon ally of Zendikar is probably the strongest Gideon for cube because he fits aggressive white decks, he fits token white decks, and his emblem is attainable the moment you play him. And then lastly, there's Gideon of the Trials, which ought to look familiar. Gideon of the Trials is 3 mana for a 3 loyalty walker who you can plus and until your next turn prevent all damage target permanent would deal. You can 0 to turn him into a 4-4 human creature soldier with indestructible that's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. And you can 0 him to get an emblem that says as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game which is basically worship for those of you who remember that card. And this Gideon is actually very similar to Blackblade. The soldier size is the same, he's indestructible, doesn't have an ultimate, but his plus one is actually really flexible because he can prevent damage from a source, Gideon of the Trials actually protects himself. Furthermore, Control decks in your cube might even play Gideon of the Trials because of this. They can shut off their opponent's most dangerous creature. They can use the zero ultimate to give themselves the worship ability so they, they can't lose the game until their opponents deal with Gideon. And so Gideon of the Trials is actually really flexible. And, I, and even though his casting cost is the same as Gideon Blackblade, I think Trials is better because of his flexibility. Think about this. Your board is empty, and your opponent is beating your face in with a 5-4 Noxious Gear Hulk. You play Gideon Blackblade, 
tick him up with, with no targets, and pass the turn. Your opponent swings in with the Gear Hulk and kills Gideon Blackblade. That's no good. But let's change that situation. You're getting your face beat in. You play Gideon of the Trials. You tick up Gideon of the Trials and target the Noxious Gear Hulk. Well, Gideon of the Trials has saved you. And if your opponent doesn't play a new threat the following turn or remove Gideon, you're going to be able to have that soft lock on the board until you can stabilize and recover. So Gideon of the Trials is actually a little bit better than Black Blade for that reason. He's better when you're behind. And Black Blade is more of a win more card on turn 3 or 4 that really presses your opponent for an advantage. But Gideon's not the only White Walker. Maybe Black Blade is better than Elspeth, which also sees a lot of Q play. So, Elspeth Knight Errant is 4 mana for a 4 loyalty walker who you can tick up to make a 1 1 white soldier creature token, who you can tick up to give another creature plus 3 plus 3 and flying till the end of turn, and if you get to ultimate her, all your permanents basically become indestructible. This Elspeth is actually really good for token decks or to use that tick up and give plus three plus three and flying ability to kind of elevate another creature over the battlefield so that they can land that final blow. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot but she's basically pumping another creature almost to the size of black blade and giving them flying. Furthermore her ultimate is just game breaking. If you ever ult Elspeth like your opponent can pick up their cards and go home because they're never landing another point of damage on you again. So, Elspeth, again, fits two different type of decks. What about Sun's Champion, Elspeth? Six mana, that's pricey, that's different. Put three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. And her minus three is a board wipe. Destroy all creatures with power four or greater. Which, by the way, means that all her tokens live. And, even if you ultimate her, get an emblem, creatures you control have plus two, plus two, and flying, all her tokens still live through the board wipe. Guys, I'm not going to lie, plus in her to make three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens, if you get to do that just a few times, you're going to take the game from your opponent. And you ought to, she costs 6 mana. But still, both Elspeths are still better than Gideon Blackblade. Think about our imaginary scenario again. If our opponent is swinging in with a 5-4, each of these Elspeths keep us alive. In fact, Sun Champion kills the 5-4 and then on the next turn starts dumping more and more tokens onto the battlefield and Knight Errant is at least going to keep you at parity until eventually you ultimate and then suddenly they can't attack through your tokens anymore. And I know that is assuming a static game state, but still, each of these Elspeths are better in the mid and late game than Blackblade is. So Blackblade is really a planeswalker that only benefits you in the early game. And if you play him super late, then odds are he's just a win more card. So, where does he fit into in cube? So now that I've had a chance to play with Gideon Blackblade and talk about and look at and play with the other Gideons and the Elspiths, I've kind of come to the conclusion that Trials is just more flexible. And so when it comes to Blackblade, it's more about do we need two three mana aggressive Planeswalkers? After all, Gideon Ally of Zendikar is probably the best Gideon, and both the Elspiths are making tokens and supporting our go wide strategies. So I really think that Gideon Blackblade is playable in cube but he's not optimal in cube. And if you're looking for a new Gideon to add to your cube, I encourage you to pick one of the other three. Gideon Blackblade right now is gonna be a standard staple. He's gonna be 25, 30 bucks. Gideon of the Trials is way more affordable and I think just better. So that's gonna do it for today, cubers. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know if you think I got my comments on Gideon wrong, although I didn't, I'm right, and you know it. We're on the Twitter now. Check us out at Cube for Two. And as always, until next time, shuffle up and keep cubing, my friends.